Welcome to the Ball Color Link Cut Flower Series. Today we'll be talking about cut flower celosia. Celosia is available to be grown from seed or you can order plugs. An important thing to know is that all celosia seeds look the same, no matter whether they're going to be plume, spicata, or crested. For germination, they need a soil temperature of around 70 degrees. You don't cover the seeds, you just sow them on the surface because light is needed for germination. The seeds sprout fairly quick in about four to seven days and they're fast growers ready to transplant in about three to four weeks. It's very important not to let the seedlings become root bound in the plug tray because that will stunt the flowers and cause them to bloom at just a couple inches tall. Celosia can also be direct sown in well prepared beds as long as you water them several times a day until they're up and growing, usually for three to four weeks. And if you are direct sowing, you want to be sure to keep the weeds under control. Celosia is a plant that can be succession planted every three to four weeks from uh, late spring until early August. And that way you'll have a continuous supply of cut flowers from mid-June until frost. You want to grow it in full sun. And like I said earlier, do not want to stress the plants in the plug tray either by underwatering them and letting them dry out or delaying the transplant. Stressed plants will initiate flower buds prematurely and bloom at just two to three inches tall. If you have a plug tray of celosia seedlings and they start to show flowers, it's better to just go ahead and start another tray because if they're showing flowers in the plug tray, they will not produce a good cut flower. After the transplant, you need to make sure they're kept well watered until they are established and growing. And that means hand watering for the first two to three weeks after transplanting. You can't rely just on drip tape on newly planted plants. Uh, support netting is highly recommended, especially with, with these spicata types. Uh, they tend to get really tall and uh, top heavy and can fall over easy. Um, some varieties uh, will be pinched. Uh, one like a variety called Kramer's Amazon should always be pinched and there'll be a chart later on you can see that tells which ones to pinch or not to pinch. You want to harvest when the flower is about three quarters open for the spicata type and fully formed for the plume or crested type. The crested type can stay on the plant for another one or two weeks after they're fully formed and the flower should get larger as they stay on the plant. It's important to remove the foliage when harvesting the plants, uh, especially if you're going to be putting them in a cooler because the leaves will turn brown in a cooler. Uh, and the flowers are best stored at about 45 degrees, so they don't like a really cold cooler. 45 degrees is best, or even better than that, if you don't have a cooler that's that warm, is to just store them in a cool area overnight and sell them the next day. Uh, the celosia flowers do produce a small little seed that will fall off onto uh, tables. Um, sometimes people think they're little black bugs, but they're just the celosia seeds. Uh, celosia can be easily dried to make a dried flower. You just hang them upside down in a warm, dark place. The crested and spicata dry the best, um, and the seeds will fall out during the drying process. So if you put a sheet or something on the floor under them, you can collect the seeds um, and grow them again next year. Although the saved seed do not always come back true to the variety that you grew the first year because some are hybrids and also they'll crossbreed. It's very important to know that if you're growing cut flowers that celosias also come in short and sometimes very short bedding plant varieties. Uh, the flowers look very similar, maybe the same color, the same shape and same size, but the plant only grows to be five inches tall. So be sure to check the height when ordering plugs and seeds. You don't want to find out once it's growing that it's only going to be five inches tall. Um, I recommend against using a pre-emergent herbicide. Um, they usually will stunt the celosia plants. And do not use preen or the uh, chemical name is treflan with celosia. It will definitely stunt the plants. Celosia does well when grown in black plastic or landscape cloth for weed control. Uh, they actually like that added soil warmth that the black fabric will cause. Uh, but you want to be careful with the young plants when you're putting them out because they can be burned by the hot plastic. Um, so you want to make sure that you transplant on a cloudy day or a rainy day so they don't get the hot sun on the plastic and possibly basically uh, dry out the stem that's touching the plastic. 
And Celosia does best in a rich, fertile soil, and you do want to fertilize as needed throughout the season. Uh, plant spacing depends on several factors, basically the variety and the type, and also whether you're growing pinched or unpinched plants. Uh, you want to pinch the plants when they're about six inches tall or about two weeks after transplanting them. And here's a chart that explains uh, which varieties should be pinched, which ones should never be pinched, and then once that you, you can decide whether you want to pinch them or not. A lot of growers will take and say if they have a bed of chief, the crested chief variety, they'll pinch half of them and not pinch the other half. And that way they have uh, two different types of flowers. Usually the pinched are a little bit smaller flower. And the pinching also usually slows down the bloom about two or three weeks. So it extends your harvest that way. But you might want to save this chart just as a handy guide when you're growing celosias as to which ones should be pinched, which one should never be pinched, and which one it's up to you. You can decide whether you want to do it or not. Now it's basically the four different types, I'm sorry, three different types of celosia. There's the plume, uh, spicata, and the crested. The plume is like a big feather duster, although sometimes a little bit smaller and more branched, like you see here in the sylphid. And the spicata is almost like a wheat shape, sometimes is called wheat celosia. And then the crested or the brain uh, celosia is the ones with the big round and sometimes flat triangle shaped with the big brain uh, coral shaped flower heads. One thing to notice that when the seedlings are first growing, they all look the same. Although sometimes you have a little bit of tint in the color of the leaves, depending on the color of the flower is going to be. But this is just comparing two different uh, spicata types Flamingo purple, where the leaves are green, but the tips are, of the plants are kind of a burgundy color. And then you get the uh, pinkish raspberry color flowers. And then the Kramer's Amazon, where the young leaves look almost like a coleus, where they're kind of a burgundy and green mix. But then as the plant grows and produces flowers, the leaves toward the top are just plain green. So these two plants have similar looking flowers, but very different growth habit. They both are great flowers to grow. And these are both ones that you would definitely want to pinch. Then this slide is just showing all the different options of celosia, all the different colors that come in, the different shapes, flower forms. And if you go to uh, WebTrack or any of the ballseed.com web pages, you can always find this uh, link called the catalog product search. If you go to there and search for celosia, you can find pictures of all the different celosias that we offer as both seeds and plugs. But again, remember a lot of those will also be the shorter bedding plant types. So you want to make sure you uh, Look for the taller varieties. And I also want to point out that the flower pictures on the uh, catalog product search are available for customers to use for the making signs on your own websites, as long as you're always using the correct picture and it's named appropriately. So you can't just put up a picture of red celosia and call it something else. You should use the name of that variety and label them correctly.